Hank here with my thoughts on Rode's humongous update for the Rodecaster video, and that's firmware update 1.2. The headliner for this brand new update has to be support for NDI. NDI stands for Network Device Interface. I'm going to show you how I'm using it in just a minute, but this could mean anything from a computer that's on your network or a PTZ camera pan tilt zoom or Rhodes capture software which is available only for iOS devices these could all be connected via NDI to your Rodecaster video so they could be on Wi-Fi and the Rodecaster video hardlined with an Ethernet cable is able to pull from that network and bring it in and I'm going to show you how I'm using it currently because the timing just didn't allow for me to race out and buy a PTZ camera right at this time. A couple of quick notes about NDI support for the Roadcaster video. First and foremost, it's free. So there's nothing extra to pay to have this functionality. It's absolutely free for all Roadcaster video owners. And number two, this only supports NDI HX, not Speed HQ. NDI HX or high efficiency NDI prioritizes lower bandwidth usage, while SpeedHQ, also known as full NDI or high bandwidth NDI, prioritizes the highest video quality and lowest latency. But let me show you how I'm using NDI currently. Since my computer is on the same network as the Roadcaster video, I've enabled the NDI support by downloading a little free piece of software on my computer and I'm able to share that on my network. And now I can switch over and I can share my screen on a show. So instead of running a cable via HDMI or if it was DisplayPort or whatever and I have to convert it to HDMI, I can now just pull that off the network. So I have three computers. I can have them all on the network and I could pull the display from each one of them into my project. In the future, I'd like to get some PTZ cameras, but I think they're better served for people who are not just stationary like I am. Unfortunately, I don't have an iOS device to use the Road Capture app, but via this new firmware, you now can capture the front and back cameras and bring them into your production. And it's kind of making me want to lean into an iOS device just for that added functionality and to have a wireless camera going around my studio or, or take it uh, into another room or something like that. I think that functionality sounds really cool. Since they're going to have PTZ cameras, it would only make sense to have PTZ control. So you'll be able to do it right from the device you'll be able to make the camera pan and tilt and zoom and stuff like that. Not only can you do pan, tilt, zoom, and focus, you're going to be able to do white balance and exposure instead of having to dig into the settings of the camera itself. That's another huge, huge deal. So obviously I have a scene set up here where I'm on my camera as an overlay to the NDI-enabled desktop of my computer. Now, since we're already here, I'll share with you rounded corners. So instead of me being this rectangle like this, now I can do rounded corners and have the trim around the edge of the videos. And I could even change the colors of those. And I could make these circles if I really wanted to, but I kind of wanted to maintain the aspect ratio. Um, because now you can do stretch and skew and stuff. you got to be a little careful with that so it doesn't look too funky with text or whatever you're trying to overlay on the screen. But I just think it's amazing that you can dig in here and mess with that. And even when I was resizing my image, I can tap a little button and kind of drag it over to recenter me. Personally, I think the rounded quarters add a lot to the overall presentation. There's nothing wrong technically with having this kind of a, a rectangular look or even a square look if I wanted that, but there's just something a little extra catchy and 
flashy about having the rounded corners. Well, this might be the lowest point of my content creation journey, but I have to do what I have to do to show you key mask. So we've got crooked, wrinkly green screen behind me. Let me get into the software and under my camera source, I'm going to click key, go to green screen, then to adjust under masking. And this is where the magic is going to happen. Let's get the text off the screen. That would help. So we'll just start bringing it in here and drag this down. Got a little softness to it. Now I could be one of those talking head videos. I could use my desktop as the background and then overlay me chroma keyed on the top of it. And I could be pointing at the screen like they do on TikTok and all those other sites and make some content like that. So again, my setup, probably not the best to preview features like this, but I just wanted to show you what's possible. The next feature is audio and video linking now using the Rodecaster Pro 2 or Duo channels. So you can tie them in for auto switching. So let's click on the Rodecaster video. Click on auto switching. We'll click on camera one and turn it to on high priority. So down here, I'm going to add audio link and go to combo one. You'd be able to set up any kind of combination you want for your cameras and your audio sources. But that's just how I will tie in mine. Camera one and combo input one. And instead of having to set up scene after scene after scene, now you could just bring in inputs as an overlay and you can resize and make it look how you want it to look. Sky's the limit on some of these new cool updates. Other minor improvements and changes include pre-mute meters. The meters are now pre-mute and grayed out when mute is active. This shows you that the channel is active but not part of the mix. New output mixes. Separate output mixes are available for HDMI A, HDMI B, and NDI. Host name change. The default name for all units, RCV, Roadcaster Video, dash JF, and then the serial number. So this ensures each unit has a unique ID for networking reasons. There's a pencil icon next to the name in the Roadcaster app to indicate you can change the name. If they would have just included NDI support, that would have been fantastic. But instead, they included all of these different features that are absolute wins for us, the consumer. What are your thoughts about the Roadcaster Video firmware update? Be sure to chime in in the comments down below. As always, thank you.